All right, Pastor Rick. Hey. Welcome, welcome to another uh, another episode of Living by the Book. Grace Bible Church. Good to uh, see you. Glad you're able to join us on this video. I think this will be a helpful one for everyone. We're going to talk about a situation that I think we're all familiar with. Uh, I got a, I received a question from someone, and the essence of their question is, you know, how, how, what do you do when you have a a brief interaction with someone, you know, a stranger, someone on the street asking you for help, or you know, some sort of situation where. You, you don't have the time to have a full conversation with this person. You'll probably never see them again. Uh, how can you be faithful to the Lord in that situation? How can you be faithful to the gospel, you know, knowing that your your interaction with that person is going to be minimal? So what do you do in those kind of those 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 quick interactions with people that I think we all, you know, we all have from time to time? What is what does gospel faithfulness look like? Well, I think it, um, obviously the word of God is what generates faith. Sure. So we want to be faithful to um, share God's word. And uh, I'm thinking of that occasion when um, the beggar um, in right. Acts 3, um, uh, now... Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer, and a man who had been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along, whom they used to sit down every day at the gate of the temple that is called Beautiful, in order to beg alms of those who were entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began asking to receive alms. But Peter, along with John, fixed his gaze on him and said, look at us. And he began to give them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I do not possess silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene walk. Mm. And seizing him by the right hand, he raised him up and immediately his feet and his ankles were strengthened. With a leap, he stood upright, and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they were taking note of him as being the one who used to sit at the beautiful gate of the temple to beg alms, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Yeah. Now, obviously, we're not going to heal people, but it, it does give to us a glimpse of the heart of Peter and John, where it, when he said, look at us, he was calling upon that connection that existed between an individual and another individual, mm -hmm. and then proclaimed the glory of Christ to yeah. him. All right, and I think that um, the 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 benefit is to um, respond to people who are wanting help with an awareness that I can help you in terms of a temporal need, mm -hmm. but the greater need that I have the ability to help you with is the re is is the eternal need that you have to be reconciled to God. And I know Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who reconciles us to God. Yeah. And I want to just tell you about him. Yeah. And then you can give the gospel. You should be able to give the gospel in 60 seconds. Yeah. I mean, to sure. somebody. Yeah. Right? It's not convoluted. You don't have to get into creation and all those kind of things. You don't have to. Right. If you have chance, it's the fine. order of the divine decrees. Right. No, no, no. Atonement and all that. no, yeah, no, no. Sure. <laughs> it's just like, you know, the, 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 there are two points that I want to share with you that yeah. are important for you to understand. Number yeah. one, man is estranged from God because of their sin. It's yeah. bad news. Yeah. Man is estranged from God. You are estranged from God. Yeah. I am estranged from God because of my sin. Yeah. And the consequence of that sin is judgment. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death mm -hmm. and that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and that our sin separates between us and God. And, yeah. and so we're in trouble eternally right. in the eyes of God. But the good news is God loved us so much that he sent Jesus Christ to die to pay the price for our sin. Mm -hmm. yeah. And anyone who turns to him in faith believing can be forgiven eternally for their sin. Right. And I point you to Jesus Christ right. by faith that you might be reconciled to God through what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. Mm -hmm. And he rose from the dead to give you the power over sin and death. Mm -hmm. And I call upon you to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to yeah. be saved. Yeah. And that may have been 65 seconds or sure. 80 seconds or whatever it is. But yeah. it doesn't have to be... Right, it doesn't require a, a, a thesis, a, a lunchtime, sit down, hour and a half conversation. No, yeah. no, you've given the gospel, and the point is that the Holy Spirit is the one that uses the scriptures right. to stimulate faith in the right. heart of a person, right? To quicken them, to understand. Yeah, 
So you're not having to feel the need to convince, persuade, argue, answer a question. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. not necessary. If you have a one and done kind of interaction with somebody that's right. very relatively brief, right? The, the the slightest reference to scripture can mm -hmm. result in the Holy Spirit's use of that scripture to stir the heart to faith. Yeah. And that can result in a journey that that person goes through that ends up in their redemption. Yeah. Um, yeah. And do you think that, that uh, do you, does that still apply? You know, this is, this would probably be pretty rare in America because Christianity is so ubiquitous in our culture, but you know, let's say that someone did becoming, under, becoming less so, but yeah, still right. Less. But even the categories of, you know, sin, but it, you know, what if, what if you, uh, share the gospel briefly, you know, if someone doesn't have those categories, like they don't really understand what sin is, they, they have a, a misunderstanding of how can the Holy Spirit overcome even those, that lack of knowledge? Through, I think through so, God's word? Yeah. because that's God's word. Yeah. Yeah. The, the scripture uses the term sin. Yeah. That a person, I, I, it, it's inconceivable to me. It's possible. It's mm -hmm. inconceivable to me that a person doesn't know what sin is. Right. That's I'm saying. It would be a pretty that, rare. Occurrence. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that everybody understands the liability mm -hmm. of conduct. Yeah. That offends deity. Right. Even if they don't have the the same yeah. term for it. I mean, yeah. you know, you you go into jungles where people have never heard the gospel. Right. They have a concept of sin. Right. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's it's something right. that that's why they're right. sacrificing to gods, right. throwing the virgins into the volcanoes right. to appease the gods well, who are angered. Because they have a conscience. They have yeah. a conscience. They yeah. know that they've fallen short of yeah. perfection yeah. and that it's angered the gods who are going to avenge themselves against right. them. Right. So they're trying to appease. You know, everybody yeah. has an awareness yeah, for sure. that they have fallen short of, right. of, you know, that's the general revelation right. that... Uh, that God right. exists, that universal moral law, and that, that He is yeah. uh, an avenger of righteousness, yeah. and so that's mm. everybody really deeply understands that. Yeah, deep down, I mean, yeah. understands that. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that um, in the in the effort to contextualize truth and so on, we we overanalyze things mm -hmm. at times, mm -hmm. and. We never have to apologize for scripture. Yeah, for sure. That it's somehow deficient. Mm -hmm. It doesn't communicate adequately. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I yeah. don't ever apologize right. for scripture. The, the scripture says, all have sinned mm -hmm. and fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah, maybe somebody doesn't understand a particular thing is a sin. Right. Right? Yeah. Right. But the moral... The concept, though. Concept, yeah. or the, 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 the moral construct mm -hmm. of... of the law mm -hmm. is inherently and intuitively present mm -hmm. in the heart, even of someone who has never heard of the Bible. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. Um, so there's a, there's an ability to, to interact. Now, if somebody says, well, what's sin? What is that? Right. right. Well, you know, it's the things that we do that offend God. Yeah. Who yeah. is absolutely holy and righteous right. and in right. whom there is no imperfection. Right. It's the imperfections of life yeah. that put us out of um, um, correspondence to or compatibility with God. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the things that we do that are not compatible with God. Right, right. Um, so you can be simple in that too, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, here this man uh, received the benefit of the healing power right. of the apostles. Right. But we give them the same hope because the greater need than that than the the greater need that the man had mm -hmm. than the physical healing was the eternal resolution of his sin um there have been times before where you know i've only had opportunity to give a person a tract and right. so i've given them a tract that right. has the gospel in it right you know that's what i've done uh, other times I've been able to, you know, God say something as, as succinct as God desires to reconcile us to himself and he has sent his son to save us from our sin mm -hmm. and we need to trust him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, something very, very simple. Right. I've had occasions where, you know, uh, we've had discussions with what we want to tell people that visit the church mm -hmm. and 
at one point I remember writing out a verse. I said, let's just give them John 3, 16, that God yeah. still loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. And I said, I just want to put it on like a uh, uh, a Christmas uh, gift tag. Yeah, I think I remember this. Right? Yeah. And just put it on the grid. Right. Well, somebody well-intentioned mm -hmm. said, well, that's not sufficient. They need more than that. And so let's rewrite it. So they took all the Christmas tags off mm -hmm. and replaced it with a, a treatise that, <laughs> you know, that really got into election and predestination yeah. and all the a, different a, a thesis paper. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it was, you know, 10 different scriptures. Right. And, right. And I'm going, is, no, I, it's yeah. not what I want. Yeah. I, I'm an unsafe person. will look at something like that and not even right. read it. Right. I'm just wanting the scripture to register. Yeah. Now, if a person would go through all that, right. fantastic. Great. Yeah, great. You know, that would be awesome. Right. But I, I, I seem to understand that unsaved people aren't necessarily interested <laughs> yeah, in, sure. in wading through right. a treatise of some kind right. with tiny little font right. <laughs> that they're laboring to read. Right. And I, no, just put John 3.16 on there and let yeah. the Holy Spirit do his right. thing. Right. Not to be irreverent, but, you know. But it, it is helpful because it does take the pressure off of us, right? In a sense, right. you know, we have a responsibility, yeah. but we don't have to... We don't we don't have to carry the burden of man if I don't fully explain everything no. to the T. I've I've you know I haven't fulfilled my obligation to this person. I haven't obeyed the Lord. You know it's 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 a good and I I like think of it as if a child can understand it, it can't be that complicated. You know? Right. I mean, you really need to work and get. I, I would say get advice or some some coaching in to where you have a an ability to share mm -hmm. the gospel in mm -hmm. one minute. Yeah. Just one minute. Yeah. Distill it down to one minute. Right. Make a nice get some coach. Clear get some coaching. Yeah. You know, it's basically mm -hmm. good news, bad news. Right. Bad news has two parts. We have sinned. Right. And the sin brings judgment. That's the bad news. Two parts. Good yeah. news. God loved us and sent his son. Yeah. That whoever believes in him will be forgiven from sin if they repent and confess their sin. Good news, two parts. Yeah. Bad news, two parts. Four yeah. parts. All together. Yeah. Yeah. And you've given the gospel. There you go. Training. Now, now, is there more to say? Yes. I preached three Sundays on John 3.16. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a whole lot in there. For sure. Yeah. You can unpack a lot of stuff. So um, it, there is always more to say. But you don't have to say it all mm -hmm. for the right. Holy Spirit to use what you've said. Right. Yeah, that's good. What you need yeah. to say is Scripture. Yeah, that's good. Because that's mm, faith that's comes powers, by hearing, yeah. hearing by the word of God. Yeah. Or word about mm. Christ. Right. So the Rhema. So the spoken word. That's what we want to do. Yeah. We want to share mm. the gospel using God's word. And yeah. you can do it very, very quickly. Yeah. Um if you have only a window of opportunity that's sixty to ninety seconds, right. you should have something that you're able to share. Right. That gives the gospel in full. Yeah. Uh, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture, that he was buried and rose again the third day, according to the right. scriptures. Right. The gospel in a nutshell. You yeah. should have the ability to share that in a way that connects with mm -hmm. a sinner who you meet. And you say, well, they're not really interested. Maybe not. Until they hear the word of God. Right. And the spirit of God yeah. quickens their heart right. using the word of God. All, all of a sudden they become very interested. As, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. we have no idea who the spirit of God is. Yeah. You know, Jesus described it as the wind blows wherever it wills. Right, right. You know, from whence it yep. comes and where, is it, where it goes, yep. no one knows. Right. You know, the, the Spirit of God has right. the ability to move and work in people's lives that we never expected him to right. do. And the people that we expect him to do something in, yeah. he sometimes doesn't yeah. do it. Yeah. And we go, wait, what? Hmm. But God is sovereign. Yeah. And he has the ability to, to, to draw whoever he wishes. Yeah. And our job is not to pre-conclude who he's going to draw, yeah. but to realize that it could be anybody and anywhere. Yep. And to understand that your testimony or your sharing mm -hmm. may be the first planting right. of a seed that needs right. to be watered right. and shined upon by the right. sun and germinate. And it may be through a series of con connections or contacts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That will follow up on the seed that you sowed. Right. That may be years in the maturing. Right. And but it all is going to be traced back to the, your right. initial sowing. Right. Of that seed. Yeah. So we don't press for a closure mm. 
um, and good. say we're yeah. we're a failure because nobody came to Christ right. when I witnessed. Right. The, we're sowing seed and letting the result. You know, uh, Paul um, um, planted, Apollos watered, yeah. but God gave the increase. Right. Right? right, and so we respect that mm. prerogative by God yeah. as the harvester. Yeah, right? absolutely. Or the planter or the waterer. Right. And if somebody does come to Christ because you have connected with them and shared the gospel with them, you can't conclude it's because I shared the gospel with them. Right, right. That you may have been the last in a string of right. events that God has right. used or witnesses that God has used right. to sow and water. And now that, that God is just using you as the combine right. that pulls in the wheat. Right. You know, that's all you right. are. Yeah. You know, and but God is driving the vehicle. Yeah. Does combine harvest a harvester of some I, kind? I don't know what a combine. I, I use that. The tractor <laughs> not, that has a thing in the box. Not, not a farmer with a formal <laughs> yeah. profession of uh, No, I, I rely on, on Safeway and Rayleigh's. Yeah, right. Uh, no, that's helpful. That, you know, that's helpful because I think those situations can be intimidating for people. And it's good to be reminded that our, our responsibility is, is pretty simple to communicate the truth that's in God's Word. Well, that's the thing. I, 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 uh, what is that? Well, it's a bill. It looks important, though. No, it's a bill of some kind. <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, um, but I, what I was thinking about is in um, um, the passage where it talks about. Um, boy, I'm having a. I'm having a. Um, a block. What are you looking for? Um, I, I'm ashamed to not know. <laughs> oh man. Where is it? Uh, where it talks about, oh, it's in Peter. Yeah, about proclaiming the excellencies. I couldn't remember for a second where that, where that was. Um, chapter 2, verse right. 9. You are right. a chosen race, a royal right. priesthood, a holy nation, people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that's, that's, the, that's the mission. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we're called to do, just proclaim yep. his excellencies. Yep. And a lot of times it's just, you know, Sharing what Jesus has done for you. Nobody yeah, can argue with that. For sure. Right. You know, especially in California where relativism is so <laughs> yeah, for pre sure. prevalent. Right. Um, nobody can argue with your testimony. Yeah. Share your testimony. How that yeah. you were lost and struggling in sin and afraid of God's judgment and death. And you, you just knew that you were guilty before God. Mm -hmm. But God opened your eyes by grace. Mm -hmm. And he showed you that the consequence of your sin was death. Mm -hmm. But that Jesus Christ took upon himself those consequences mm -hmm. and died in your place and right. that you trusted him and he saved you as you mm -hmm. confessed your sin to him. And he saved me, yeah. forgave me yeah. and set my feet on a trajectory toward heaven where yeah. my life now is being lived mm -hmm. to seek the good pleasure of God and his glory. Mm -hmm. And yeah. God can do that for any sinner. Yeah. Yeah. That's not overly convoluted. Right. That's not theologically sophisticated. It's just the basic truth of the gospel right. that you're sharing as a testimony. Right. And, you know, that was even 30 seconds. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you can, you can in, in these one and done exchanges where you don't have much time and, you know, uh, it would be great if we um, were able to get the gospel down to where uh, opposing escalators, you'd have the ability to share the gospel <laughs> right. uh, with somebody in yeah. that amount of time. Yeah. Right. That yeah. would be awesome. Yep. To be able mm -hmm. to distill the gospel down. Yeah. And somebody might say, well, you're going to leave out important components. Yeah. Well, there really are the four. Yeah. That you're a sin, that sin is, you're a sinner. Mm -hmm. the sin brings consequence. Right. Jesus, God loved us and sent his son to take the consequences right. so that we can be forgiven and reconciled to God. Those are the four parts. Yeah. You know? That was about 10 seconds. And, and you know, you do want to mention that he rose from the dead because that's, yeah. the, that's the power of the gospel, right? Right. That he rose from the dead to give life yeah. to anyone who believes in him. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's not does not have to be complicated. You don't have to be theologically trained. You don't. If you know Christ, you have the ability to give the gospel. Yeah, amen. And we would advocate that. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Well, right. We want to be in a place where every single believer is intentionally helping another follow Jesus more, and that starts. You know, when we talk about our path of discipleship, it's engaging and evangelizing the lost yep. first. So. Yep. We appreciate you doing that, Pastor, because I know a lot of us have those interactions throughout the week that are mm -hmm. brief. And I hope, Church, that this has encouraged you and just reminded you that 
uh, that sharing the gospel is is easy and does not have to be complicated, and it is ultimately the Spirit that does the work. So, church, and I think yeah, pray for the opportunities. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Lord, open a door for me today. Yeah, to share the gospel with someone, and then expect God to answer that prayer. Yeah. Look for it, and don't have God throw open a window mm-hmm. for you to share the gospel, and you're so oblivious that you don't even notice it. Yeah. You know, pray for that. Pray for the opportunity. And then look for the opportunity that God's going to give you in response yeah. to that prayer. And be ready, ready to share the gospel on a moment's notice. Amen. Amen. Church, go for it. We'll see you next time in another episode of Living by the Book. Take care.